Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Are you, are you excited to worship and hear His word today? Yes. Wait, lang po ah. Palapakan naman natin yung worship ministry. Thank you guys. One second. Abang natin to. Pakisabi muna sa katabi mo, uh, I am excited that you are here today. Tapos lubusin ka din natin, pakisabi naman, uh, you look gorgeous today. So welcome to our second part of our nation building series, How to Awaken the Selfless Leader in You. So nasa second talk na po tayo last week, si Yanni talk about the first uh, topic, right? Which is choosing a leader and we, we determine and we learn how to choose a leader. And yung root cause nun is built to the family foundation. So today, yung talk to natin, Ayan, so it's entitled Be a Leader. So later on, meron tayong sobrang special the guest speaker that will discuss this sobrang malaman na na-topic on how to be a leader. Alright? Okay. So, if you're all excited, I know we're excited to hear God's message, right? Yes! Right? So we're all, if you're all excited, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the Peace. In the name Today. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word, so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let's honor the word of God. mentioned we're on our second talk entitled Be a Leader and I want to impart this word, this message to you today brothers and sisters. Can we all read this? God is God appointing you. God is appointing you. He's not disappointed but He is appointing you. Amen? Amen. God is appointing you. Wait lang, bakit nagkakaroon yung trouble mo? Sorry. So God is appointing you. Okay. So, before I get into the discussion about God disappointing you, uh, puntahan lang muna natin si Nehemiah. Sino dito nakabasa nyo nung, nung uh, book na ni Nehemiah sa Bible? Meron ba ba? Okay, so, before we get into the story, did you know, brothers and sisters, since this is a nation building series, uh, medyo naging famous si Nehemiah to the point na, okay, to the point na ginawan siya ng kanta ng mga Pilipino. <laughs> okay. Wala na kaka ng bantang ginawa ni Himaya? Wala na? Okay. It goes like this. Dig, 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 dig. Ne Himaya, dang the beast! What? Grabe yun, nakakaba yun. Nakakaba. To be honest, brothers and sisters, din talaga ako pinabahay rin sa topic. Anyway, so si Nehemiah, a brief background we get into his story, right? So si ba Babylon uh, used to conquer uh, Jerusalem. Alright? Uh, okay, used to conquer Jerusalem. And then, uh, yung mga skilled guys uh, from Jerusalem, Babylon made them a slave. So they were left in chains. So that actually runs for about 50, uh, 50 plus years. And then one day, si Babylon another country conquered Babylon with the name of 
uh, Persia. So, si Nehemiah actually served as a cupbearer of the king. Pero yung story na yung brothers and sisters were in Babylon conquered Jerusalem and then uh, Babylon being conquered by, by Persia. Anong, anong topic? Anong like, what's the lesson of that? Actually, it's a reminder that nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever, right? So, kung sa buhay natin, for example, kung meron kang mga kaibigan mo before na parang narinigan mo ng story way back on their childhood that they were rich and then suddenly they were not rich anymore because nothing is permanent. It's similar actually to the title that you, you were given today. If you're leading uh, at work or if you have a title, don't get that title or that leadership title into your mind because nothing lasts forever. So all the richness, we cannot bring it that, you know, in our, in our afterlife. We cannot actually bring it. So please don't get into your mind whatever position or whatever richness that you are possessing right now. Because that's not permanent. It's only through God that is permanent. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. So, okay. This one last. That's pretty much the, the lesson of that uh, story. And then, Balikan lang natin si Jerusalem. Ano na nangyari ni Jerusalem? Then, can we all read this? Hanani, one of my brothers, brothers came from Judah with some other men. And I, and I questioned, questioned them about the Jewish remnant that, that had survived, survived the exile, the exile and, and also about, about Jerusalem. Jerusalem. They, they said to me, those who survived the exile and are back, back in the province are in great, great trouble, trouble and disgrace. So parang, di ba, nagsilbi na si, uh, nagserve na si Nehemiah sa king of Persia. Alright, and then one day, nakita niya yung mga brothers niya from Jerusalem, from, from Judah. And then kinamusta niya. And then the state of the brothers or the brethren is not good. Actually, wala lang dito, pero let me read it. Uh, what Nehemiah felt about after hearing the state. So nakalagay dito, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. So Nehemiah was so shell-shocked by what he heard. And then in the Bible it was written that when I heard when he heard these things, he sat down and wept. He sat down and wept. And then he prayed to God. Like for some days he mourned and he passed, he fasted and he prayed to God. So, brothers and sisters, the question is: what moves you? What moves you? Can you repeat that? Tell that to the person beside you. What moves you? What moves you? Uh, can you, you know, if you can go back to, if you can go back to that uh, news where it, you heard it, and then it moves you so much that you needed to take action. Uh, if you guys can remember Yolanda, right? So, maraming Filipinos, many Filipinos were moved by that incident. And then they responded in terms of action. So they can, they contributed and then they they get into like foundation and tumulong talaga sila. So the question now is, what are the incidents in your life that really moves you if you can go back to that? And ano yun? Ano yung, yung situation na yun that like Nehemiah, you will be responding back to Jesus and actually respond to that anointed of God. So reflect it within you, what moves you? So that's God. God is asking you today to, to move into a situation wherein you are anointed. You are anointed. And that's the message of God today, brothers and sisters. You are anointed, and if you hear it within you, you know, uh, a message from God that, let's say, whether it's, in an, uh, whether it's a calling into your work, into your family, or in the ministry, like, listen into your you know, listen within your heart what God is telling you and move, respond to that because God is appointing you. Amen? It's already the word of God. Yes. 
sit down. I will introduce the, the special guest, our special guest for today. Okay. Are you excited? Um, actually, it's my honor to introduce this person. I look up to, to this uh, woman a lot. And I think a lot of us in the congregation looks up to, uh, to, to this person so much. So, talking about selfless leadership, uh, I've seen it in action through this person. So, um, to be honest, it's one of the, you know, in peace, because we're all equal, right? Pero for, for those people that who don't know this lady, uh, actually obtained certain success in her career, which really, really, we, I know, for personally, I, I know, parang I respect her a lot because of this. You know, she's a regional manager handling Mid Middle East and Asia, handling 36 countries. Pero when you see when you see her here, she's just okay. She's a reminder and a reflection of being a selfless uh, servant of God. So I'm very honored to introduce you, our very dear Mommy of Peace, Sister Ned. Hello? Kinabahan ako doon. Parang, bakit pag dito kakabahan ka? Pero pag trabaho, always good. But, you know, it's because it's personal. You know, you share what you learn, what you experience, right? That's why, kabado. But, anyway, is there, do we have a, a foreigner here? Can you raise your hand? Welcome to the feast, the happiest place on earth, not only here. Okay, so um, I need to check my time because it's 5 o'clock. Because, to be honest with you, the topic is, I don't know how to use... This is... Oh, Okay, so my topic for today is be a leader, okay? Do you believe that we are all born leaders? Yes! Um, just a second, eh? uh, I don't know how to use math. How to go to the next slide? Okay, so be a leader. Do you believe that we're all born leaders? Yes. Ooh. Some people say that, you know, we're all born leaders. Some are made. Made. Why? Because you need to, de to develop something in order to be a leader. Okay? Um, do you consider yourself a leader? You do. That's good. We'll find out in this talk. This talk is actually, uh, they use it in a conference um, for three, day, three days conference, but I need to, to squeeze it in 30 minutes, to 35 minutes. In FIST, we are called bivocational missionaries. Why? Ask me why. Why? 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 Why bivocational missionaries? Because we all came from different professions. If you are an engineer, then you serve this, you join the community fist. You are a servant of God, plus your, whatever your profession. You may be a CEO, you may be the president of whatever company, but when you join a community like fist, you are a servant of God. So you have two vocations, right? So that's bivocational missionaries. Now, in FIST, when you join FIST, regardless of your title, we are all equal. Do you believe in that? Yes. We are all equal. 
You may be engineer, you may be lawyer, whatever. We are all servants of God, regardless of your title. So do not attach your position at work when you are serving God. Okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about some um, some technical and practical because we do it in, on our daily lives. I'm gonna talk about character of a leader. Can you picture yourself? Can you picture somebody that you really look up to, right? Uh, that made your eyes so large, right? That impact that has an impact on you. Can you? Think about of somebody. What what was it? Is it the skills? Is it the life? Uh, it is the abilities? Is it the personality or is it the character? Character is different from, from personality. Why? Because personality, from the time that you entered in grade school, you are stuck with the personality that you have that is relatively stable over time. Character, on the other hand, is developed. Do you believe in that? Yes. Yes, because if you are introvert, right? You are shy. And um, most likely, you are shy when you grow up, when you, when, you, when you started working, reserved, right? However, that doesn't prevent you or that doesn't uh, inhibit you to be a leader. Why? Because there is a character that you need to develop. You may be introvert. You're not the type of person who always, hi, hello, blah, blah, blah. But still, there are, th there are characters that you need to, to, to develop. And what are these? Number one is courage. So I'm going to say this six. So this is not, <laughs> this is not um, really coming from me. I attended a lot of trainings, leadership trainings, management essentials, one and two, whatever you call it. And, and I thought this is effective and this makes sense, right? Courage, what does it mean? Bravery, the ability to do something in a painful situation, the strength in the face of pain, that is courage, okay. But what I'm going to tell you, there are two types of courage. You believe that? That there are types of courage? There is physical courage and there is moral courage. Right? Being a leader, you don't just have this courage without thinking. What is moral courage? Which is very important to be a great leader. It is at the heart of resiliency, okay, that uh, it is at the heart of resiliency to resolve a conflict of self and truth. Make sense? Yes? Okay. So, it is resolving conflict between self and truth. Then what inhibits the development of this courage or moral courage is your selfish insecurities, right? Okay, let me give you an example. This is the best example. I asked permission first to give this example and she said, okay. I V once had an issue. Who are the salespeople here? Raise your hand. Oh, quite a few. Ivy had a, a approach once made, and she said that there was a client approached her, and um, I believe she was able to close the deal, right? But then, unfortunately, the client was not hers. It's another colleague. She asked me, and actually, a few of us whether what she's going to do. That question is a question, is it doing the right thing? Am I going to do the right thing, right? She had that courage, moral courage, to say that 
I need to talk to my colleague that I was in, that I closed this deal. But the commission, of course, you know, there is commission. Am I going to take everything or half half? So it depends on the colleague. What she did, right? Uh, uh, she she told to to her colleague, and then they agree. That's I believe it's fifty fifty. But she felt good. First, she had that courage to determine that that you know whether is it right or wrong. Second, the physical courage to talk to the person, right? Moral courage is all about choices. You are put in a difficult situation to decide on what am I going to do the right thing or not, right? So. Let's give her uh, an applause. She did the right. right. Okay. Um, one thing I would like to highlight in that example is that she was e she was able to adhere. It is adherence to the moral and ethical principle of hers. By not trading away her net, my next slide is sorry, I'm not used to this integrity. That is number two of being a great leader. She never treated her integrity. She was honest to say that, yeah, you know, this is the right thing to do. Remember, never trade away integrity. If you if you realize politicians, that's the main issue, integrity. It is the uh, critical component of being a great leader, integrity. You need to remember that. Now, integrity means doing the right thing when no one is watching, right? It's basically honesty. Um, there is another example of integrity just, just recently that I also asked permission, but she doesn't want to be named. She was put also in a difficult situation. This is actually worse because there's illegal kind of thing. And she was like so stressed out because it's against her will. It's against her values. It's against, everything is against, right? Because it's illegal. To discharge water illegally. And it's not up to the standard. And she was like fighting. Am I going to follow the management? So what she did, um, she spoke to the she spoke to the higher management. She prayed a lot for this because it's against her will, right? It, it, this is not right. This is not right. You're affecting the environment, whatever. So she spoke to, to the higher management and that courage that gave her to, you know, to talk and her also integrity, to be honest, to, to do the right thing, right? Was there in that kind of situation. So if you will notice in our daily lives, right? Courage, integrity, lies on our daily lives. It is your choice. Moral and physical courage is a choice. It's all about choices. Um, so it doesn't mean that if you, are, if you are a person who has integrity, you don't commit mistakes. We all do commit mistakes. Yes. Right? Yes. We all do. Sometimes we are dishonest as well. We, we tell lies. Who are not, right? We are human. But your integrity will only be intact if you seek continual improvement, recognizing your mistakes, recognizing that you know you lied to that per to, to that person, you cheated your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever, right? If you recognize your mistakes and you seek continuous improvement or development, you will be able to keep 
your integrity in time. Okay? It makes sense? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. So our, 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 our third character is selflessness. Selflessness. Selflessness, everyone want to be selfless, right? They said, um, there is a saying, to lead is to serve. Selflessness is all about um, love for the people you serve, love for God, right? It's selflessness is generosity of your time, of your effort, and your resources, isn't it? We all do feel that. And that's what we need in this, in the fist, right? To be selfless and not to be selfish. Because people who are selfless leaders focus on their missions and visions for the good of the community. They are doers, they are competent, right? Because they love what they do. There's always love because it takes heart and soul to be selfless. Right? What is the opposite of selflessness? Be selfish. selfish. Why? Some people are selfish because of fear. Insecurities. Yeah. Right? These are all selfish. These are garbage of hearts. These are rubbish that we should not put in our, in our hearts. You will never be selfless if you have, if your heart is selfish. You only think about yourselves. You don't think about the, the group or your team. Who are the team leads here? Who are the managers here? Do you know that? If you don't share your knowledge, you're very selfish. You don't want you don't want your team to succeed, yes. right? Because this kind of people, this kind of people are, they have fears, fears to lose their job. Oh my goodness. They're not thinking that when you share your knowledge, right? When you give your, your effort of sharing, teaching, training, when someone replaces you, that is a success. Because if no one replaces you, it means you are selfish. You will never be promoted if you are like that. You need to remember that. You want to be promoted? Move to another job? Be selfless. Don't be stingy of, of not sharing knowledge, sharing your, your talents or whatever, right? In the feast. Look at this. Courage and integrity comes together. They're, they come together. People who are, you know, um, shy, showing their talents. Come on. Have the courage to dance. Yeah. Have the courage to yeah. Have the courage to be. Right? Have the courage to stand up here and share your knowledge and share your thoughts. Share your um, your, uh, whatever you learn at work. Isn't it good? Isn't it, is it, it, it feels better, right? When you see someone rising up, rather than, well, you know, the crab mentality of people, right? Like Filipino people, by the way, we have the so-called crab mentality, unfortunately. Some people really not happy seeing people rising up, right? Don't be like that. And face doesn't teach you that. Face teach you to be selfless, to serve God without expecting anything in return. Amen. Even to serve people. Because serving people, when you serve people, is serving God. And do you know that you serve yourself as well? Why? Tell ask me why. Why? You, you love what you do, you serve the people, you serve God, it benefits you. How? It makes you happy. Amen. You're able to share your talent. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. See? So you serve yourself. But that is a good 
good self-survey. Nice. Right? It's not bad. It's good. For as long as, uh, you know, it brings good something in you, you make people happy, you make yourself happy, then it's a good word for self-serving. Self-serving people in a bad way, we know they are the ones selfish. They are the, uh, they have all these fears, you know. We need to remove those fears because we have God. Okay. okay. I think I, I'm, I'm able to meet my 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Empathy. Okay. The, the, the fourth one is empathy. What is empathy? Empathy means um, it is the capacity to comprehend or experience other people's feelings. You put, in a layman's term, you put yourself in somebody's shoes. I can tell you that everyone has that character of empathy, right? Some people don't have that, they cannot even empathize. But to be honest, sometimes people has to go, uh, people have to go through or, you know, bad experiences first, go through things before they can, before they can empathize to, to people. But don't, don't do that. Right? When you are watching television, mm, let's say a drama, right? Esperanza, <laughs> whatever. Why do you cry? Right? Especially love stories, heartbroken people, right? Why do you cry? When you are watching movies, because yourself, you can relate. You put yourself sometimes in the situation of what you are watching, right? Yeah. That is empathize. A leader needs to have this because you will never know the feelings of your followers, of your team, if you cannot, if you don't know how to empathize. That's so bad. A leader, no empathy. A leader that doesn't have this empathy. My goodness. It's really, really bad. He, he will never go far. Okay? He will never. He will never go far. So, empathetic leaders, I put here, leverage diversity because of individual differences. Do you believe in that? Yes. Right? They make it, because we are all individuals, right? We have different experiences. We all, well, Face members comes from come from all walks of life, right? I know in the Philippines, I was attended feast, right? But then realizing and recognizing that of that individual differences, you'll be able to learn to empathize other people. Okay. My fifth and sixth character, it's actually not a character, but it is how you be able to collaborate. A leader needs collaboration. Yes. Why? 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 Yeah? This is a critical component to get the team's support. If a leader doesn't collaborate, doesn't communicate, how can you get, how can you achieve your goal? How can you achieve your your missions and visions without talking to each other, come on guys? Yes. Communication is the key. Amen. Right? Yes. To be honest with you, even at work, we try to analyze what was the issue. It turns out that it's a communication gap. It's always communication gap. Don't talk to each other. That's so bad. A leader needs to talk to each one of the of the of, of each of the subordinates or or followers, whatever you call it, yes. or your team uh, team members, right? Yes. It is very important because collaboration creates teamwork. 
communication builds relationship. Without them, you will never be a great leader. Here you can a, a leader that doesn't talk, doesn't communicate, collaborate to the team members. Oh my goodness. That's why this needs to be developed. That's why this is part of the six. This needs to be developed. If you are an introvert person, I can tell you, my boss right now is American. And he's the only American I know that's introvert. Do you know what I do? He, sometimes we, uh -oh, I'm not gonna say, this is in YouTube, sorry. But he, 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 I'm sorry, but do you know what we do? We do the reverse. We try to communicate because we understood that he is not that type of extrovert. He doesn't really talk. Can you imagine? I can count. I can count the number of meetings I had with him in one year in 2018. I probably maximum of 10 or even 5, I think. Imagine. An organization without collaboration will never succeed. I'm telling you, it is very important to collaborate, communicate. You need to recognize that. Okay? Now, number six, reflection. Why is it a character? Reflection, is it a character? But something, but reflection is an essential component for any leaders. It is a critical component for growth, growth, self-awareness, authenticity, right? Awareness. When you reflect, you get to realize things. A leader requires the reflection to gain wisdom from experiences. You're a bad leader if you don't you know, reflect, where did I go wrong? How did I succeed here? Right? If you don't reflect, then reflection links. This is what links our performance to our potential. Makes sense, right? Yes. Reflection. I'm going to tell you, you need to reflect, have a me time. Being a leader, have a me time. Reflect something. Yes. There, there was a saying, I'm gonna say it in Tagalog because this is more impactful. I told this to my, uh, you know, some of you. Um, pul there, was, there is a saying, pulutin ang mabute, itapon ang masama. I learned this from my spiritual mentor, okay? If you think about it, it's wrong perspective. If you are a leader, can you imagine? You're gonna throw all the bad ones. Your followers will pick it up. Pulutin mo ang mabuti, itapon mo masama. Ang mangyayari nun, so ibig sabihin, yung kasunod ko, pag itinapon ko ang masama, yung kasunod ko, ang pupulutin niya, masama. If you are a great leader, itapon mo ang mabuti. Pulutin mo ang masama. Because being a great leader, you can change that masama thing. Nice. That bad ones. If you are a great leader. For example, insecurities. That's garbage of the heart. Jealousy. That's garbage. Itatapon mo ba yun? Wag. Kung magaling kang leader, babaguhin mo yun. Nice. Hindi mo yung itatapos sa mga followers mo. Hindi ba? So, never, never do that. Change that. Change your perspective. Change your perspective. Kuhanin mo. In terms of getting credits. Kung magaling kang leader, will you take the credit all the time? No. Take the blame instead. Take the credit with modesty. But take the blame with humility. Amen. Yeah. If you think about it, right? Because, just like what I said, right? You are a great leader. You are considering yourself a great leader anyway. But 
patunayan mo yun. Huwag, huwag kang, some conflicts, right? Huwag ka lang magdagdag. Don't add fuel to the fire. Instead, put that fire with water. Para mamatay yung apoy. Hindi ba? So, reflection is very important. If you want to be a good leader, a great leader, do the right thing. Sometimes, doing the right thing may not necessarily the best choice. Or right choices may not necessarily be the best choice. Internalize those phrases. But you have to decide by not trading all these characters for money, for power. And ito yung sakit ng mga politiko, di ba? Ipagiging leader nila. Critical nga tayo sa kanila. We are the critics of these leaders. And sometimes we think that we're all good. Now, by saying all these six, you can now reflect how much of them you have now and what are those you still need to develop. Okay? Think about it. Just be humble. Be humble on... Because, you know, so, minsan, yung pagiging leader is, Oh, ako yan. Ako na gano'n yan. Diba? Ako may gawa niyan. Ako may ganito. You always take the credit. You're not a good leader. You're not a good leader if you're like that. A leader that has a mindset of selflessness has indulgence to God. What inhibits to develop all these characters are fear, selfishness, insecurities, jealousy, name it. These are all garbage. These are all rubbish of the hearts. Don't throw them away. Instead, change them. Be selfless. Be a true servant of God. Be a great leader. Right? I'm gonna say this. Humility is the foundation of all virtues. I learned this from my father. Right? It's our indulgence. So, now, listening to this six, you will no longer want what others had. Right? I wanted what God wanted for me to have. I felt secure in God's applause. Because you, you're able to develop all this. You know, that's what, like what I said from the, from the beginning, personality, if you look at these characters, it's, it is composed of different personalities, right? Honesty, you know. So I felt secure in God's applause. When you have all this, good. I can tell you, you will be su successful. Your team will be will definitely be successful. You are a leader and somebody to them. Being an OFW, right? Um, we we do you feel sometimes that you're a leader? <laughs> in, the, in the in the mindset of Filipinos, right? If you are the breadwinner, you decide. You are the ones. Uh, they seek, they seek approval from you because you have the money, right? Sometimes you feel like you're a leader, but ah, I'm not supposed to decide. You know, it should be my parents. But you are, you are posted in a in a place that you are forced to be appointed or appointed to be a leader. And so, panindigan mo na rin. Panindigan mo na rin. Kasi, OFWs are selfless anyway. What? We're working here for what? For our families. Selfless always have 
sacrifices. We sacrifice what? The distance from our loved ones. You know? So it is innate leadership. It is in us. Ignite them. Ignite them. Be a leader. Okay? That's all. So before we brothers and sisters, before I invite you to stand and for us to proceed with worship. Uh, meron ako, uh, no, let's not stand yet. So this this talks a bit different because meron tayong additional uh, pointers that we, we need to share. So talking about uh, building the nation, right? Uh, as a peace family, uh, we both scientists also derive uh, 10 things that he believes God anointed life of Jesus' family to do. So, let's proceed to that. So, this is the 10 blessings that he believes uh, of the life of Jesus' family. So, first is, so we all read this, God has appointed us to reach the, the church. So, if you've been attending feasts for a while, you, you know for a fact that uh, the mission is making disciples, right? Making disciples. So it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether at work, whether at home, whether you're already at church. So this is as, as a feast, feaster, feaster, is it the right term? As a feaster. So uh, we are called to actually uh, reach the church people. And as we all know, LOJ, Light of Jesus fam family, uh, we were actually designed to reach the church. So that's why in the Philippines, the, the, the normal setup is that it's located in uh, inside the malls, all right. So the second uh, blessing is, you know, this God has appointed us to build relationships. So as we all know, every uh, you know the, the faith. In, in, same with other uh, relationship, uh, building faith is also being developed by developing faith relationship with your brothers and sisters. So you don't journey alone; you journey it with other people as well. All right. So third is God has appointed us to give teachings that are relevant. Engaging practical, biblical, and Catholic. So LOJ, we, we do uh, have several series every month. So the whole uh, one year, we have 12 different flavors. This is where we engage the people. This is where we learn not just limited to developing our faith, but also seeing God in other aspects of our life, like uh, work, uh, finances, love life. So that's why we make it uh, those kind of teachings to engage the people. Uh, four is... God has appointed us to raise up an army of bi-vocational peace planters. So, sabi nga ni Nanang Nuebs kanina, di ba, we are bi-missionary, meaning to say, all of us here, uh, we are group, parang doing great in our professional career. But, we also have another uh, mission, which is as a servant of God. So, it's up to you whether you are called to serve in music, in dancing, or in, you know, in, in praying for other people. But, you have to discover it within yourself that you're not limited to a calling to, to just purely professional way. So there's, there has to be, it has to be bi-vocational. God is appointing you to something else. Yes. Five is God has appointed us to disciple young people. We all know church is being built by the young blood, right? Yes. So dito yung young pa? Yes. 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 So we all know that church is being built. You know, sabi nga nila, di ba? If the church is composed of old people, then it's dying. So the, the, the greatest sign of a, of a, of a growing church is you will see young blood. So we, we, we need to keep this in mind. Uh, number six is God has appointed us to raise up young preachers or leaders. So related to number five. So that, uh, I mean, our time here on earth is limited, right? So if you're just one leader and you're already eight years old, diba? Parang, for example, if you just keep and limit your community, you know, focusing on the senior leader and you don't develop young leader, then your church will die. So LOJ right now, if you can observe, we have hundreds of peace around the world and we're building young leaders. So that our scale is actually uh, malaki, malaki scope natin. We can easily make disciples across the world. Number seven is God has appointed us to create vibrant worship music. Do you believe you're being blessed by your worship ministry? Yes, yes. amen, amen to that. So, yeah, that, that's one of LOJ's uh, blessing. Number eight, God has appointed us to hold life-giving large events. So aside, we're, we're relatively small here, pero in the Philippines, LOJ, the Light of Jesus family also conduct thing 
Kariba conferences. Like, the one being attended in Singapore is also like in, in whole Asia, right? So meron tayong mga large event where we really see how huge of an impact LOJ is doing in terms of serving and making disciples. Number nine, para paano naman natin yung community guys? Right? So number nine, blessing, God has appointed us to share three, uh, Jesus through media. So media means uh, social media, definitely, because the reach is exponential. But we also do TV, we also do radio, we also do magazine through Marima. So if you can observe, LOJ is doing a lot of things just to honor the word of God. Amen? Yes. Number 10, God has appointed us to serve the poor. To be honest, brothers and sisters, uh, when, I, when I read this part, uh, it says there that this is the core, this is the core of LOJ. That's why Bo Sanchez developed multiple ministry focusing on the poor. And this is majority of his income, uh, FYI, 90% of Bo's income is being shared through foundation. So, nakaka-inspired, diba? When I heard that, it grew to my desire that I wanted to have so much money so that the, the tithing is just 90% and I can live with the 10%. Amen. Imagine how good of an impact you can make, right? To, to serve the poor. Alright, so that's the 10 blessing. Pero meron pa rin, wait lang. <laughs> Medyo mga baha ba siya? Pero you see how good of a community feast is, right? Yes! So we're doing a lot of things to, to make disciples really. So, God is appointing you. God is appointing you to a secret purpose. He, he has His own agenda into your life. So for sure, kinakausap ka rin yan. Hindi to work ha. So it's the Bible motivation it's the other side. So you, you, you need to listen within you what's the purpose God is appointing you. So next, I just want to discuss this 10 ways of nation building through peace. It will run through na lang siya very quickly. So, yeah, this is LOJ. We make disciples for Jesus. One-on-one -on -one discipleship. And number one, to build the nation we believe in the Philippines especially. Nandun nakasituated ng LOJ, right? So, make the peace a priority. Like, spend at least one day in a week to attend feasts, to learn practical teaching about the Bible and about the love of God, and to grow your faith and to build a relationship with the community. Can we do that? And you can give your hands a clap because we're all here today. Number two, okay, this is where we make, we apply the principle. This is the actual part. Number two is we invite friends to the peace. Who here bring a friend already to the peace? Yay! You know what, in the Philippines, just to share, I, I brought a lot of people and it was my pleasure. Parang it's, it's really, uh, good feeling when you see people serving. Like one of my friends who, who introduced peace is serving in Aldi in Barcelona's peace. And she's already the head of the, the, the peace community, diba? So, at least yung small invitation mo lang can go a long way. Alright. Number three. Use love someone today. That's the LSD. Okay. Booklet as your tool to disciple people to Jesus. Sino na dito naka-experience ng LSD? Love someone today session? Okay, so this is building relationship. It's just like a small booklet. It's also part of uh, the application of LOJ community. This is actually sobrang maganda foundation where we create relationship and we create... Uh, this is the, the booklet that we use to make disciples. So this is where we expand. Alright, the kingdom of God. Number four, be a peace planter. Be a peace planter and be a peace light. So... Share with you your personal experience. I was the first batch who attended the peace video in Missouri. Uh, that was way back 2012, but I did not continue. Pero guys, FYI, you know, the impact of friends go, they're not, they're, they're actually born again Christian, but they attended peace until now. Alright? Uh, so, if you have planned to share Jesus, maybe at work, and you have a small room, meeting room, uh, peace light is like a peace video, wherein it's downloaded already, you just play, so, parang press mo lang, play the button, and then Bo will, will do everything. And then you just pray afterwards and discuss the topic. So yeah, be a peace planter. Number five, share inspiration via social media. Ito medyo madalas ko nakikita to sa peace. It's very common because I believe if, if ever, like, if you feel within you, like within your heart, if God touches your heart, it's so easy to share it, right? Because you want people to, to remain, parang to, to feel God is alive, right? I remember like few weeks ago, I just posted like one of my friend, Facebook friend, she's a high school friend. Um, 
nag-post kasi siya na parang medyo suicidal attempt na. So parang God is knocking me na, okay, you have to post this. I post it like if you're reading this, uh, God tells you she got her back and you are beautiful. And then marami pa lang, marami pa lang likers, marami na message personally na thank you for that message. So guys, brothers and sisters, share inspiration, positivity in your social media account. Kasi you, you, you never know, maybe that person is, you know, medyo mahirap getting into a, a negative situation. And maybe your message, guys, for it lang siya to be, you know, a glimpse of life. But God is alive. Can we do this? Number six, sorry, I'm a bit Number six, let or give our reading materials. And we have it here on your right side. So... This is where, uh, you know, feasters, brothers and sisters, we mga assign them every week. Uh, we write beautiful articles of our personal experiences. And this is also where we read uh, our founder, Bo Sanchez, message. So, share it to other people na hindi pa alam yung feast. Maybe through this way of, you know, giving the materials, maybe this can be the, the, the path for you to connect them to the community. Alright? Number seven is join a live group. Sino dito may live group na? Well, we see a lot of new faces for the benefit of the new ones. Life group is a small, uh, remember, make disciple and relationship, right? It's our foundation. So life group is a small group of people, whether single men, single women, couples, or uh, different family. So uh, this is where we actually reflect on God's word, but at the same time, we get good memories, we build relationship. Yung nakita nyo kanina in the first video, that's part of the dance ministry group. Okay? Get that? Um, number eight, sir, in the Beach Ministry Junior Survey. So, bye guys. Bye guys. Thank you. Yay. You should be proud because you're serving Jesus, right? You know what, guys? It, it just hit me a lot. Like, I'm giving more than hundred. Like, siguro ngayon, parang hindi ako accredible eh. Pero on my career in the Philippines, I've given parang sobrang 200% of my effort is being dedicated at work. Pero now, uh, to those of close to me, I always mention I'm doing part-time work and I'm doing full-time ministry. Pero it, it just put a smile on my face knowing that God is pleased and smiling because I choose to prioritize Him. Amen? So, come on. Sige. Interactive tayo. <laughs> Top mo yung person beside you, sabi mo, I'm proud that you are a servant. I'm proud that you are a servant. Amen. Amen, amen. Praise you, Jesus. God, brothers and sisters, God is saying to you that He is proud that you are serving Him. Number nine, support our works for the poor. So, we, we talk it, uh, yeah, sinapagod din siya kanina. So, <laughs> Yeah, support our works for the poor. So this is in the form of typing or like being present, sharing your gifts. Uh, that's also another form of you know uh, supporting uh, our works for the poor people. Then lastly is be faithful in your typing. Be faithful in your typing. Oh. Do you believe uh, everyone still is a work in progress? Yes. Sabi nga natin yun ang UMC, but that's why color yellow. I was laughing kanina nung discuss niya sa akin kasi I think a lot of people in sales especially can relate to that color. <laughs> Like green is done, and yellow is. Hi, hello. Can you say hello? All right. L O J P S K A L A L U M P O R. We have young blood here. Amen, amen. Praise Jesus. I'm gonna call up the worship team now to join me. Uh, can I also invite 